Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm back with another hot foiling video, this time for Alex Siberia Designs because I wanted to show you my favorite trick. I think I've showed it already, but it's a really good one for foiling with dice. So we all know by now that you can use your dice, even your background dice, to add foil to your pro project. It's amazing, especially when you're first starting out with foil because you already have background dies probably and you don't want to invest in a ton of foil plates right from the get-go. So I am starting by adding my foil to my paper. I am using uh, watercolor cardstock for now and I'm using champagne hot foil by Spellbinders. And this is a trick, baking paper. Parchment paper works as well. Um, I've heard we don't really have parchment paper here so I'm using baking paper. And what this does, if you add it over the foil and under your die, you get um, more pronounced lines from your die. So the lines are usually very, very thin. You can barely see them if you foil them. Uh, they're a really fun detail, but if you add bake baking paper in between your die and your foil, your lines will be a little bit thicker, a little bit bolder, almost like a hot foil plate. I do always assemble my hot foil, uh, it's not really a sandwich, this one, um, before I put it on the actual hot foil system or the glimmer system. I just find it easier. You use paper, then your foil, then your baking paper, and then your dye. Um, it's just a lot easier for me to do it that way. And then flip it around so your dye is facing down on your glimmer system. Now I'm actually remaking a card that I made on a Instagram live for Alex Siberia Designs about a month ago, maybe even longer. I always wanted to remake it in a couple of different colors because I really enjoyed the process, but I also thought it would be a good video. Now I love foil because it's really fun anyway, but it's also a really great medium to color um, afterwards. So you can color it with alcohol markers, but watercolor is very, very gorgeous as well. The foil will, will resist the watercolor. It's not like embossing powder. It won't help you keep inside the lines or stay inside the lines with your coloring, but it will resist the color. So you will have shiny gold foil at the end of this, even if you go a little bit over it with your, with your watercolor. Uh, this time I am using the Karen, Karen brush markers. Uh, these are really, really fun to use. I don't get them out too often, um, but for a project like this, they're perfect. I just follow the colors as they are in the box I have. So I am just following the order they come in. And it gives me a really great result. I made a blue and purple one on the live. Now I'm making a orange and pink one, but I've also done a blue and green one. And these are perfect birthday cards. You just add a sentiment on top of it. And I always find it so relaxing to color a geometric pattern like this. It's just no thinking, <laughs> just putting some color down, blending it out with your, uh, I'm just using a paintbrush and some clean water. But these brush markers do come with a blending brush as well. I just find that I get better results when I use just a paint brush and plain water. Once I'm done coloring these, I didn't go all the way to the edges because the design doesn't really go all the way to the edges uh, because it is a die. It's not meant for foiling. Um, I just cut it down to put on a card later. And now I'm using one of my favorite ever sentiment dies. I love how dainty it is. This is the Celebrate die from Alex Siberia Designs. And I am layering this up. Now this sounds daunting to use a super, super dainty die like this and layer it up, but it's actually really easy. Just make sure you don't cut it out of flimsy paper. Use some thicker cardstock for it. It will cut beautifully every time and you can layer it up, just add some glue to it, then dab off the excess glue on a scrap piece of cardstock. I just use some copy paper, and that way it will leave your die cut sticky enough to adhere to whatever paper you want to adhere on, 
but there won't be any excess glue seeping out of the sides. I love that trick, I've been using it for years and I <laughs> am not gonna stop anytime soon. It's really, really, it's a really good trick to use for dainty dyes or when you just don't want to be too careful with adding your glue to your die cuts. Now another trick I always use is I use cardboard to prop up uh, large panels. So anytime I have a full panel on a card that I want to add dimension to, I use cardboard instead of foam tape because of a couple of reasons, but mostly because it's cheap. It's also very, very sturdy, so it will go through the mail a lot better than foam tape would. And it's lighter, actually. Uh, or it's not lighter than foam tape probably, but it's lighter than stacking up pieces of cardstock, which I did for a while when I got tired of using foam tape. <clears throat> so because the cardboard is mostly hollow inside, it's just a lot lighter to go through the mail, so it's cheaper to mail as well. I prop both of my panels up on some card bases, and then I am adding my sentiment. This die set comes with a very, very dainty scripty layer, but also a shadow layer, so I cut that out of black and the scripty layer out of white. I stack both of them up a couple of times and then put them on my project. I'm adding a couple of different embellishments to this, but I didn't have to think about the placement because, again, I had already made this card. When I initially made this, the first card of these, um, it took me a while to figure out the embellishments. The people watching the live helped me out a little bit. So I was just following the same design. It's fun sometimes to not have to think and to just color and put things together. Overall, these are really quick cards to make. I think I spent half an hour coloring both of the panels. Um, so 15 minutes for each. It was really quick to do. Um, these cards are also really easy to put together once you've colored them. So I really, really love these. Even for mass producing with foiling, I think it's a quick design. So these are all the colors of the cards I have, and I am probably going to make more of these just because I enjoy the process so much. I, again, I really love coloring geometric patterns. It's so easy. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like the foiling tips and tricks I shared today. And if you did, make sure to leave a comment on the video, leave a like if you liked it, and make sure you subscribe to see more of my videos soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.